Hello, Douglas County. It's Wednesday, October 21st, 2021, and I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County and the Public Information Officer for the Fire Department. Welcome to today's edition of COVID-19 Update with Dr. Janet Meemark, District Director of Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Welcome, Dr. Meemark. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Dr. Meemark, well, we're here to give a update, COVID-19 update. Where are we with the numbers in Douglas County and what can you tell us about hospitalizations? Yeah, so, so far so good. We're going in the right direction. We're really excited about that around here. So um, right now we're at 314 cases per 100,000 for the last two weeks. And I, we know that it still keeps going down. So it's very good news. But remember, it's still, you know, 100, um, 100 cases over 100,000 is still high transmission. So we're still in high transmission. But the number of tests that are coming back positive um, has gone down to 6.9%, which is very, very good news. You know, 10% is that like marker number. We get very concerned about some um, very high community transmission. We really want it under 5%. 6.9, it is heading in that direction. It's been over 20% for Douglas County. So we're really excited about that. Hospitalizations continue to improve as well. And so those are COVID hospitalizations. Um, and so those are still going very well. Although Wellstar Douglas Hospital on the um, Georgia Coordinating Center is still um, pretty overcrowded over there. Um, and on emergency room diversion at this moment, they could they could release that at any um, point, but still a busy hospital though. So we got to remember that. But um, COVID numbers are definitely going in the right direction. Well, that sounds like some really good news, Dr. Meemark. And I want to know, you know, really, we have uh, we've had a heavy push on vaccinations and I want to talk about vaccinations. What are the numbers? What are the numbers for Douglas County residents who have been vaccinated and what are we seeing nationally? Yeah, so for first vaccinations for Douglas County, we're at 49%. So we're real close to the 59, I mean, the 50% mark. Um, and for fully vaccinated, it's 44%. So not that far behind. Now for nationally, it's 66% that have gotten that first dose and 57% that are fully vaccinated. This is a great time for us to remind everybody we still have vaccinations that are offered at Arbor Place Mall and on our Selman Drive location. Um, they are free vaccinations. So um, you, um, can go and get those. And then sometimes we have outreach events as well that you can check on our website that change um, pretty regularly to see if there's somewhere that's even closer. Um, this is a great time to just um, keep that in mind because we're going to talk about um, all these new boosters and vaccines that are coming. And so you have to kind of know where is a, a good place that you can get those done. So we were just talking a little bit up earlier uh, before we began recording. Uh, with our public information officer uh, who just joined us, Phyllis Banks, about COVID boosters. And there's a lot of information out there about the COVID booster. What do we need to know? Yeah, so so let's back it up a little bit. So I, this gets quite confusing. So let's start um, at the, the basics. Um, first of all, you know you have either your one or two dose, two dose series of your vaccine. That is the regular course of the vaccine. Um, now, there are third doses that are available for the Johnson & Johnson and the, I'm um, sorry, third doses for Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines. Now, what a third dose is, is if, is if your immune system is um, kind of weakened by um, whether you have cancer undergoing um, cancer treatment or you have HIV AIDS um, or you have um, some sort of transplant where your immune system is low, um, you need a third dose. And so that would be the, the next in the series. So that's a, that would make your series complete for that would be third the third dose. So you would go ahead and get that. Now, now the next thing we have is the boosters. So what they are seeing is that um, for some folks that um, the immunity that you get from your shot series will go down a little bit, especially in those that are older because your immune system is not as robust. And so you require a third vaccine to bump that back up. And so that's the booster. Pfizer had already released the booster, and that was a while ago. And now we have uh, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson that have been approved by the FDA. Now, 
what what does that mean? What next? Now I'm getting all these emails that are saying, okay, what's next? Like, where do I get my vaccine? What do I do? So for us, um, having now the FDA is approved, the next step is that the CDC has to give us the final recommendations at that point. With um, um, Pfizer, they, they switched it around a little bit. So we have to make sure that um, whatever they tell us is what the recommendation is, and that's what we act upon. So we're already getting some information. We anticipate by Monday we'll be ready to go to be able to give that vaccine. So what it seems like will be that the Moderna um, vaccine will be six months after you've completed your second dose. That's for anybody 65 years and older. Um, if you're 18 through 64, you can still get it if you're kind of you have high risk um, conditions like, you know, uh, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, um, cancer, those kind of things. You can get that um, third dose or if you get a, an, you're in a lot of contact with folks. So if you're, you know, any sort of healthcare provider, any teacher or someone who works, um, you know, with lots of different people during the day, you're the ones that are going to need to have that extra booster. Like I, I'll make sure I'll get my booster as well. And so, so that's great. So that the uh, Moderna was approved for that. And so has Johnson and Johnson. That will be at least two months. So this one's a little bit different um, after your last dose. So same kind of people. So we're looking at that. And Phyllis had asked me about the uh, mix and match that is being reviewed too. So the FDA said that that can be done with the um, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that they're, they can be interchangeable, um, but we need to wait for the CDC to get final recommendations and then we'll know exactly what the all the rules are for that. But those are things that are coming down the pipeline for um, our COVID vaccines. Dr. Meemark, that is awesome information and very detailed um, and well needed for our residents and community. Thank you so much. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to say to the residents of Douglas County at this time? Yeah, so I wanted to talk about the one thing I'm very excited about, which is um, vaccines for children. So um, Pfizer has submitted their data to the FDA. So that's first. That's the first phase, right? Um, for um, uh, vaccines for uh, COVID vaccines for children five through eleven. And so what's exciting about that is that it's actually a smaller dose than the adult vaccine. I was a little bit nervous about that, you know, because my uh, thirteen-year-old went ahead and got the full dose and. She she did great. That's great. But my uh, my 11 year old turning 12, you know, he would get the same dose as well. And I was like, I started thinking about it. I'm like, well, that'd be the same dose as somebody that, you know, a 400 pound man would get the same dose as my, you know, 88 pound you know, boy. So they have the smaller dose and they did all of the, uh, the research on that and they're finding it to be super effective in children and they do really, really well. And so they're showing that it decreases hospitalizations and deaths and, you know, and, and decreases is their um, chance of getting it. So I love that. I'm really excited. So on the 26th next week, they're going to be um, doing the FDA will review that data. And once again, it will go to the CDC. This will be a quick process. Um, it sounds like they are ready. Everybody is ready and waiting for this vaccine to come out. So we are they're actually going to be shipping them and getting them ready. So when the CDC approves, we're going to be ready to go. So I would expect um, next week or the week after we're going to have kids vaccines and um, and, it, you know, you may ask me, Rick, of, you know, was this stuff done really fast and should I be worried? And no, you shouldn't be. When you look at it, um, this process was done just the same way as they would have done other vaccine trials. Now, the only thing is they've taken away the barriers. You I mean, you all should know how slow the federal government can can work. I don't think we're used to how quickly the federal government can work if they want to. If they want to take all those barriers out of the way, we can actually get, we can have some miracles done, which is really, really cool. So I'm very excited. And uh, so keep, be watching out. So we'll be doing it well as well as our, as our partners, but Douglas County Schools is gearing up to work with um, Premier Ph Pharmacy to get those vaccines out as well. So we're very, very excited. They will be free and children have done really well with these vaccines. That is all awesome and uh, very good news. Um, also, you know, I'd like to thank, you know, Premier Drug Pharmacy for what they've been doing ongoing with the school system. And want to thank you guys as well, Cobb and Douglas Public Health, with really helping us get the word out for our residents. Thank you. For Dr. Janet Meemark, I'm Rick Martin. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day.